Hey, hello, you're stuck in traffic with the Wolf Product. Couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Today, looking at vulnerabilities in security software. You know, there's uh, two things recently happened in the news, and both have been asked about. One is that uh, antiviruses are coming now, pre installed, with a new feature. That is a security backdoor, remote code exploit as system. Uh, and the second is LastPass, right? So Tavis Hornsby of uh, the Google project went and uh, released some vulns. They've now been patched, but they were in a password manager uh, that allowed uh, folks to gain access to passwords. I'm not going to go into details of either of those. Instead, what I'm going to give you today is the following tip. Tip to you, don't throw away security tools just because they have vulnerabilities. We're all going to have these vulnerabilities. The um, Security software is just like any other software. All software has a defect density. In other words, the number of defects per lines of code that's usually around 0.69. Some higher in new code bases or smaller teams, some lower in more mature code bases or with uh, you know extensive QA processes. But every software has vulnerabilities, has this defect density. And within this defect density, 0.69 per thousand lines is the standard, like I said. Within that, there's a portion, usually about 10% of security vulnerabilities. So you can safely say uh, for every, let's say 0 0.6 for 1,000. So for every 10,000 lines of code, there is likely to be six defects that could lead to a vulnerability. Six defects. With that in mind, the fact that, uh, you know, Tavis Hardens be found three in, in LastPass and uh, there was two in Symantec isn't necessarily surprising. Uh, because we need to, you know, we've come to expect from software, software has bugs, and, and many times one in ten of these bugs leads to a vulnerability, and then people do bad stuff. Now, of course, security tools run in a higher context, so you have more to lose, right? If you get your password manager and you lose all your passwords to everything, that's pretty significant. If you get at uh, your antivirus, someone takes over SEP and uh, it's running a system, and they can, you know, do local code execution as a system. Now that's pretty significant. So that I do not want in any way, shape, or form to dismiss or minimize those. These are these are bad things. These are bad things going on. However, we can't then go, well, fine. There's vulnerabilities in these. Forget it. I'm out. I'm cashing out, taking my chips and going home. I'm not gonna run antivirus. I'll run nothing at all, or I'll run, you know, the default that comes with the OS. I'm not going to do use passwords. We're going to go back to sticky notes um, because you know there hasn't been an exploit in sticky notes in a hundred years. Whenever these things happen, we always have to balance out the risk of using the tool and the vulnerabilities the new code introduces versus not using the tool and the vulnerabilities that um, are exposed by not having an antivirus or good password manager. We've had so many passwords stolen. All right, and we've had so many um, outbreaks of malware that could have been prevented if people were running decent AV tools that I always get concerned whenever these things pop out because invariably I know I'm going to be asked sometime in the next week, should I just go back to putting passwords in a text file or running no AV? Whenever we look at security controls, we always have to balance that risk. The risk of running them, which always introduces new risk no matter what the vendor says to you, and the risk of not having them. Balancing those two is a way to make good decisions. And of course, knowing that they're gonna have vulnerabilities, we begin to put some other controls around to protect LastPass from getting whacked or um, Symantec, right? From getting exploited. And then of course, we patch. Patch, 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 patch. So kudos to all the vulnerability researchers out there who are finding these things and bringing them to our attention. Kudos to the vendors who are providing speedy patches. And uh, we'll just keep on going forward. What do you guys think? What's a good tool that uh, may not be worth the risk? Or what's an interesting vulnerability you've seen? Hit me up in comments or on social media. Cheers.